Right, start of stage 19. Uh, it's been a long day already because we've just driven back from Cheltenham and it took four or five hours because there was some incident on uh, on the motorway. And uh, yeah, it was a complete nightmare. But anyway, last thing I want to do really after driving for that long is uh, go out on my bike for two and a half hours, but I've got to go out on my bike for two and a half hours because that's what I said I'd do, so I'm going to go and do it. I say two and a half hours, I'm hoping it'll be a bit less than that, but see how the legs feel. See you in a bit. Belinda, who actually, well, I've seen she's my friend. I don't really know her. Um, I don't really know her because I've never ridden with her, but she's a member of the club and she said she'd keep me company today. Uh, I'm gonna need some company. She's gonna keep me company uh, until I got Belmont Hill on my own. So let's see how we get on. 55k and then one more day tomorrow. So, this is Belinda. Hiya. Um, She's done some work for GTN and stuff. She's a, a budding filmmaker, way better than I am. She's worked on Ari Alexa cameras and things like that. So she's way above something like this Go, GoPro. But we're about to go up Belmont Hill um, and we don't want to. No, we don't want to ride up it, but we're gonna do it because you can't do a tour of the Southwest of England without going up Belmont. So I'm gonna shut up now because I'm not gonna be able to talk and uh, Belinda's going to beat me to the top, there's no doubt about this. Off we go.
wave how. Anna, I don't know why I'm moving this around, it's a 360 camera. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about being upstage. He's ridden 200 miles in two days. Hey, why don't you come out and do the last stage of the, my ride with me? Yeah, alright. Talk about upstaging. Thank you, bastard. It's only two days though. Yeah, but nonetheless. Thank you, Jack. So you're going to head off, aren't you? Yeah. And we're going to trundle our way home now. We've done, what was it? We've done 33, 34k? Yeah. yeah. Cool. So how's managed to uh, puncture us? Ah, oh, is that where it's gone there? Yeah. There it is, look. Yeah. You know, sideball blowout, mate. That could be fun. There you go, you see. Oh. You go ahead, Bob. That's it, done, 1200 kilometers done, 21 days out of 23 ridden. Uh, I've come to the conclusion really that what I was doing wasn't that much of a challenge really. It was just a case of as long as I could get on my bike every day, it'd be all right. Um, whether I'd been stuck on the motorway for five hours or whether I had to get up a bit earlier because I had other things to do during the day, whatever it was, that was probably the biggest challenge. Yes, my legs felt tired at certain days, but you know, let's face it, some people commute to work five, six days a week. Uh, and travel a lot further distances and ride a lot faster than that and do a lot more elevation than me. So uh, really it was more of a kind of personal challenge than anything to kind of set the set the kind of record books alight really. But it has, it has made me think a little bit about a challenge for next year, um, which I'm not gonna go into too much detail on uh, in this video because I want this to be about what I've done rather than what I'm about to do. Um, and we've got some stuff coming up next week, uh, the kind of family stuff that's been going on um, escalates and ramps up to a new level next week. And uh, I kind of feel like it's the right time to sort of go into that a little bit more. Um, and I'm not going to do that in this video. It's another thing that I'm going to do maybe later on this week um, and talk uh, a little bit to camera about that when I get to it. So first of all, thank you to all you that have sent me messages about the ride. Um, I did appreciate all of those and a special big thanks to all those of you that came out and actually rode with me. Um, in no particular order, Cy Halliday, um, Chris Newman, Dave Rostron, Steph Hull, Belinda Humphreys, Anna Scott, Ryan Kessel, John Burridge, Jonathan Bale and Andy Jill. Massive thank you to you guys for coming out and supporting me. Um, whatever the weather, whatever the time of day, whatever the route was, uh, some of you came out with me several times and were probably quite bored of the routes as I was. Um, that's one of the things I have learned about this uh, this last 21 days or 23 days of riding for the last 21 days um, is that I really do wish I'd planned it. Um, stage one was really uh, a mistake, if you like, where um, the idea for doing it happened whilst I was doing that ride, um, and which meant obviously I had to then continue. But I wish I had a bit more time to kind of actually uh, plan the ride each day, um, maybe sort of a, a few different routes, maybe even drive my van a little bit further afield uh, uh, to, to kind of start in different places, that kind of stuff. Um, what other things have I learned? I've learned that the uh, quietest roads were in the Cotswolds around Gloucestershire. They were also the worst road conditions in terms of uh, potholes and stuff. 
Uh, the worst drivers were down in Exmouth, um, but I don't think that that's an Exmouth thing. I think it's the, uh, the the terrible holiday makers, all those angry Londoners who kind of made their way over to the West Country and were desperate to get to their uh, their caravans or their homes down on the uh, on the harbours down there somewhere. Um, and uh, I managed to get it all uploaded Wednesday. I finished, which obviously uh, meant that I was uh, I wasn't uh, a victim of the uh, terrible Garmin outage of 2020, which is probably the thing that most people seem to be uh, the thing that will stick in their minds most about this year. Forget COVID, forget everything else that's happened. It's going to be about the the Garmin outage that's taken place. Um, people absolutely losing their minds over on Twitter um, just because they can't upload stuff to Strava for people to give them kudos. Um, I, it didn't affect me uh, because I've uh, I managed to get it all done by Wednesday which uh, which uh, meant it, <laughs> it wasn't so much of a problem and um, I have gone out for a bit of a run um, since I finished I have also been out for a bike ride today which took me over 200k even for this week even though I only had three stages to do a uh, bit of a run um, which has reminded me that my plantar fasciitis is still there and a couple of nice easy swims with mates which were really good fun um, but I'm looking forward to getting back to doing a few other things um, but I am going to have to stick to the bike um, and swimming uh, to get the weight off so that I can really fix this plantar fasciitis because I need to be back uh, and running fairly uh, fairly soon. So some of the harder rides that I did were the ones that I did on my own. Uh, I, that's obviously a motivation thing and obviously just getting a bit bored and the, the, the kilometres just tick by when you're chatting away to people. And some of the people that I rode with I've known since my early teenage years and some people I've not really known at all and have just got to know whilst being out on the bike with them over these last few weeks. And one thing that has struck me is that uh, riding your bike with somebody for a couple of hours is a great opportunity to talk and to get to know somebody. And that it, it's one of those opportunities really to kind of open up um, and talk. Maybe it's to do with the neurotransmitters that are releasing oxytocin and serotonin and all those other kind of things that are going around your head that kind of make you feel happy enough to kind of open up about stuff. But I've been amazed really at how, uh, how easy some people have found it to open up to me and vice versa, that I've kind of told people that I don't really know very well, things that uh, you know, are very personal to me. Um, and I think that's a good thing. I think it's a positive thing. If I've taken one thing from going out and riding my bike is that I tend to train on my own. Um, I do tend to ride my bike on my own because my, my mindset really is thinking, you know, you're racing on your own. You're not supposed to be drafting, not in the, the, the types of races that I'm doing anyway, um, with time trialing and triathlon. Um, so therefore really it's a good idea to train on your own as well. But actually maybe for those long, slow rides um, where you've just got to get the miles in, it, it's a good opportunity to actually kind of talk uh, to your mates and spend a bit more time on the road uh, with them. And that's something that I will take from this, which I've never really done. Um, I've never really ridden in company with other people. So anyway, that that's sort of just some early thoughts, I guess, really on it. I'm sure other things will crop up from it, but it's been a really good, um, fun e experience for me. Um, one that I'm gonna build on next year, which I'll talk about in a later video. And um, yeah, thanks once again for all the messages of support and that you've enjoyed watching the videos and all that kind of stuff. And I will be putting out a couple extra videos uh, over the next couple of weeks, uh, talking about the challenges that, uh, that we're, we're coming up against as a family, but also the challenges I want to set myself next year. I want to go beyond just racing next year. I want to do some things a bit like this uh, this stage, stage kind of tour, if you like, that I've been doing the last couple of weeks. Anyway, thank you for watching and uh, have a good week and make sure you look after yourselves and look after each other. All right, Trish, you looking forward to it? Absolutely.